And welcome back, fellow adventurers, to Let's Play Dreamfall Chapters. When we left off, Kian had just completed his first mission for the Resistance. And now we need to go and confront Nayane. Kian, of course, being the only one who knows her uh, secret of betraying the Resistance to the Azadi when uh, Kian went to the Swamp City. Back in the previous game. Oh, yep, good. We can run. Let's see. I think her quarters is one of these doors here. This is ours. Yep, it's got the same mural. Still nothing to see in here. Here we are. I've been expecting you. Why did you protect me in there? Why not tell them what I did? An interesting question. I only had a moment to decide. That's not enough time to weigh a person's life. I have no intention of protecting her secrets, but her selfless actions granted me a second chance. At the very least, she deserves to be heard. It was her portal that helped me escape the keep. She healed my wounds. She knew I might expose her, and yet... Yet she saved my life. Ah, so Naane was the one who gave that magical portal to the captain. Which is very interesting, because up till this point, Naane's magic has been shown only for its beneficial effects. Um, so now we know that she can also cast rather dark magic as well. I called her a traitor. But are we so different? Good point. Um, I think Kian might say, see giving her a chance of salvation just as he was given one. It was. Why did you save me? Because you were sick. Because you needed me. Because without my help, you would have died. Knowing I might tell everyone what you did. That made no difference. The Resistance needs you. So I did my part. You're still a traitor. I did betray the Resistance. But before you decide what to do with me, will you hear me out? I think that's only fair. Everyone deserves to be heard. Maybe the others won't give her that opportunity. Speak. When I gave you the location of our base and betrayed April, I thought I was sacrificing one person to save everyone else. But many died because of my actions. This has haunted me. I have questioned my motives. Did I sell her out to save the shipment of food and medicines? Without it, many would have suffered. The old, the sickly, the children. Or did I betray the resistance to save my own skin? I would have been executed by the Azadi. I truly don't know. Perhaps it was a little of both. Perhaps things are not so black and white. We can never truly know the consequences of our actions. If you keep my secret, I can continue to help. I am of real value to the Resistance, despite my crimes. Turn me in, and more will suffer. But justice, for what it's worth, will be served. It's your choice to make, Alvane, not mine. What is your decision? What will you do with me? <laughs> so as we can see, you know, only 8% actually had Keon go ahead and tell everybody, you know, and on the one hand, you know, you can argue it's might be against Keon's character at this point to just now go off and tell everyone that she's a traitor. But at the same time, I think she makes a pretty good argument. It's not like Keon can't tell people later if she turns out to do something that he doesn't like. He basically has this... Uh, uh, has the secret over her head, just as he's always had, basically, ever since they first met, and he made up this agreement, uh, made this arrangement with her. So there's very little to gain in, in in telling everyone about her now, and you can see that reflected in the decisions. She's important to the resistance. Without her, they will be even weaker. I must protect her secret, whatever the consequences. She's important to the. 
I'll be watching you. I promise you won't regret your decision. I will live to repent my sins and serve the Resistance. I'm in your debt, Alvane. Always and forever. You saved my life, but I may still call on you one day to do something for me. I'll be ready. She's rather grac gracious, considering the fact that the entire reason that she's in this predicament is because of Keon. She is uh, a bit more willing to forgive than I think others would think. The first is on her way. Has she mentioned him? I don't think so. You do know she's brought General Harmy and that mother with her. Utana, it means nothing. The General was due back in the Northlands. What about the mother? She's rumored to be next in line for the seat. She wants to be involved. She was also the bleeding heart who practically raised Alvare. She sponsored his whole education. Light. She could be a problem, but what can we do? We make sure none of them know Kian is alive and with the Resistance. Mistress, your presence here honors us. Sister Sire, this is an impressive edifice. It appears your work here has borne fruit. We believe so, Mistress. We welcome you to Malcuria and the Northlands. Anything you need, you let me know. Mother, I'm pleased to see you as well. To have the both of you here is a great honor. Quite. The Seat wants to know how the mission goes, how the Northlanders are handling the transition, and how many of them have chosen to embrace the light of the Goddess. We will speak of this, and much more. For now, we have prepared dinner for all of you. I hope you will join me. Right. Well, I am starving. The food on those cloud ships... General, I did not expect to see you back so soon. Neither did I. What's this I hear about Kian? Yes, what of the Apostle? It pains me to inform you that Alvane died in a riot. He was detained under penalty of death until your visit, Mistress. Unfortunately, the rebels snuck their agents into the prison. They cut him down and burned his body. Goddess guide his immortal soul to the First Mountain. With every respect to you and your seat, Mother, Alvani was a traitor. He betrayed the cause and he... May I remind you, sister, that the Apostle was never relieved of his title and should be addressed properly? And may I also remind you that without a proper trial and judgment by the first of the six, his so-called treason remains an accusation and nothing more. Now that he's... no longer with us, we may never know the truth. But our people will not be told that the Apostle was a traitor. Mother. How did you say he died, Commander? Uh, stabbed during a riot. They burned his body, hopefully after he'd bled out. We weren't able to retake the prison until the next morning. I will need to see the keep for myself, Commander, and interview the guards and prisoners. Certainly. I shall make arrangements for you to visit in a couple of days. Don't bother, Bamon. I'll go there tomorrow. You don't have to trouble yourself. I'm sure you have better things to do. As you wish, Mir. How is the engine progressing? The engineers are working day and night to connect the tubes. We expect to be able to switch it on according to schedule. Good. I have brought the final instructions from Sadir. The architect will send any remaining modifications by cloud ship. And when the Prophet returns, he will inspect the engine before we switch it on. Have you not spoken with him? Not for many months. But he will be here when our goddess-given task is complete. Only he will know how to bring it to life and to interpret the messages from the engine. Of course. Please, will the two of you accompany me to the dinner table? I'm sure the kitchen is worried the food will turn cold before we are seated. General. Commander. Until tomorrow, sister. Mother. My lady? Vamon, if you'll dine with me in my quarters? Of course, Mia. Tell me again what happened at the keep.
He hello? You were there. Ixul Panax Brekal. We met. Oh, it's a fine, uh, longest journey tradition. Being uh, out in the middle of nowhere in your underwear. <laughs> and it's continued in this game. Hey, there's Ednaxis. Is that a, a man? He doesn't look human. No, he's not human. What is that? Have we... have we met before? We will. We are meeting now. Venari Abnaxus et al. I am Abnaxus of the Venar. Oh, uh, hi, I'm Zoe of, um, the humans. Who's that? He will be Ular Pala, chief of the Ular. Those who remained, children of the Purple Mountains. Okay, this is a dream, right? It was. You dreamed of things else when. Of Abnaxus who was. And who will soon have passed beyond the veil and into the great forgetfulness. In the dream, I will speak of the time that has flowed and the time that will still flow. But outside the dream, I will be sick. And uh, for those who are new to the series who may not recall, the reason that Abnaxus speaks so strangely is that the Venar, as a race, are pretty much outside of time. They precede, they precede all events in their lives um, simultaneously, or as in, they perceive time like we perceive space. And so because of that, they really don't have any uh, firm grasp of uh, past, present, or future tense when they speak, and they often get them confused. Um, so trying to parse Abnaxus's words is always a bit tricky. Now I want to come back here and have a look at this person, because we will be seeing them later. Um, because I think we saw something that looked kind of like this before. And that was underneath the Mercurian city. In fact, near the base of the tower, there were lots of old ruins in the previous game. So the, this species seems to be perhaps tied to the idea of tapping into dreams at least more so than maybe the other magical races of Arcadia. You'll also notice that, you know, whether or not this is just a vision or he's actually some, somehow here, he's, he's following us, which I thought was kind of interesting slash kind of creepy. All right, so we need to get ourselves over here. By the way, all this background looks very much like the winter from the previous game. But not quite, because it's not perfectly white. As you can see, there is something way out in the distance. And Abnaxious men mentioned the Purple Mountains. So, in effect, we may be getting some kind of half-dream vision of that area. Because, as you can see below here, there is a lot of purple. The Purple Mountains are also known as the Border Mountains. They're located um, in uh, the northern area of Marcuria. And they are... Probably the very first thing we ever saw in the very first game when April Ryan had her dream She met the white dragon out here in the border mountains somewhere. I Was like a petrified tree in the middle of a river frozen in this moment while time parts around me
The Venar will uh, often talk about trees as well because they are very strongly tied to trees and their dwellings are often consisted of circles of trees. I think he said his name is Abnaxus. Is he human or something else? He does not look human. I don't think he's human. I think he said his name is Abnaxus. So why am I having this dream? You were needed. Achik Aksik Nabe Ajna Achik Aksik. The first dreamer needs you. The first dreamer? How did he get over there so quickly? There's some sort of doorway into the mountain. This one is also sick. This one is dying. Looks come hell. What does that mean? This one's name is Lux. This one is the first dreamer. This one is like you, like your sister, like those who did dream and shaped reality. Ah. So, for the first time since meeting with Faith, we see another dreamer. I can't tell if it's a boy or a girl, but she or he is beautiful. Lux. Light in Latin, but I have no idea if it's the same here. The first dreamer. That reminds me of something. Am I a dreamer? No, that can't be it. Can it? <laughs> yep, since uh, Zoe forgot her memories during her last adventure, she forgot that she had been identified as a dreamer. Another dreamer? Wait, that, that wasn't real. That was... that was just another dream. Yes, and also much more. We needed you to come. You came. You will come here to help Lux. Everything depends on this. Everything that was, is, and will be. If this one ends, everything ends. All of time. Someone... Someone else told me the same thing. What does it mean? This one is the first dreamer. This one dreams. And the dream is the universe. When the dream ends... W what's happening? W where are you going? Hey! Hey, come back! Tell me what's going on! Zoe? Zoe? Are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm okay. I'm fine. I... Oh, I was just dreaming. You were crying out in your sleep. Nightmare. Do you want to talk about it? Uh, yes, it was, and uh, no, I don't. Oh. What time is it? Time for me to leave and for you to start getting ready for your doctor's appointment. Oh, I want to sleep. Yeah, well, too bad. See you later? Uh, uh, sure. I'll stop by the office when I'm done. Okay. Love you. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I like that, that uh, title there. Relationship saved for now. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. I think we have some a new journal entry, maybe, and 
Maybe some new character profiles. Let's just check really quick. Yes, we do. All right, so let's start with Blind Bob. Theoretically, Blind Bob was, until recently, a con man and beggar famous for using his theoretical blindness to earn coin to sate his thirst. Then, one day, something remarkable happened. After a chance encounter with Zoe Castillo on her first journey to Arcadia, he had an awakening. One might say that his eyes were finally opened, and Blind Bob became blind, uh, Bob who can see. Bob began to realize that his life he'd served no one but himself. Now that his home was under threat from a tyrannical occupant, he finally had an opportunity to repay his crime of negligence. And so he rose from the filth he slept in, stood straight, and joined the rebel movement. Now Bob has shed his beggaring shell. He's risen like the phoenix from the ashes. He's burned his stinky rags and donned the uniform of a Northland soldier, blossoming into an honorary general of the resistance, a stunning strategist and a glorious leader, capable of instilling fire and venom in his fellow rebels, and a fierce commander of bog duty laundry service, and rations. Once Blind Bob has become, in a word, epic. I wonder if Bob wrote this. <laughs> That's a nice pose there. All right, next we have Naane. Naane is a Zibmari artisan and a longtime member of the Resistance. She hails from Irhad, where she served the Rose Court. Um, and by the way, artisan is the highest level of sorcerer or sorceress. One year ago, Naane betrayed the location of the rebel base in Miria, the Swamp City, to the Azadi Apostle Kian Alvane. She did this to save shipments of food and medicine to the Magicals in Marcuria, as well as her own life. As a consequence of her actions, many rebels perished. The Azadi were led straight to Miria, and to the rebel leader, April Ryan. Because of Naane, April was killed and the resistance almost crushed. Naane's betrayal also led to Kian's death sentence and imprisonment in Friar's Keep. Only Kian knows the truth of what Naane did, and he now holds her life in his hands. Here we have the first of the six. The six are the child empresses of the Azadi Empire. They reside inside the sixth circle of Sadir, the capital of Azadir, from age twelve until adult, uh, from age twelve until adulthood. After which they become revered and sequestered sisters of the goddess. The six wield immense power, but but one kept in check by others. They are under constant scrutiny and observation, rarely venturing outside the six circles of Sadir, and their reliance on their council of advisors and ministers is absolute. Their rule is short. None of the six have served longer than a decade. The first is the most senior of the six. She sent Kian Alvane on his faithful mission to hunt down the rebel leader, and she's now journeyed to Marcuria to oversee the activation of the engine that's been under construction for almost a decade. So, um, kind of a unique governing system here. I, I don't think I've seen a system quite like this in other fantasy stories before where you have the highest authority uh, basically having a tenure, a fixed tenure, not because of uh, old age, but because of young age. The empresses will only serve until they are no longer, quote, children. But as it's mentioned here, they probably aren't actually the authorities because they rely on the adults that are around them. And I'm sure that... Um, their council of advisors uh, tries to make sure that the empresses do what they think is right. So in charge yet not in charge, it seems. Okay. You have M Mother Utena. Over 30 years ago, Mother Utana, then a young sister, charged with running a small temple in a poor neighborhood of Sadir, rescued a homeless and wounded Kian Alvane from the streets. She took the boy in, fed him, nursed him back to health, gave him a bed, and taught him the word of the goddess. She became an important mother figure in Kian's life, as well as a guiding light in his spiritual awakening, and their relationship has always been strong, though they've not seen each other for several years. 
Mother Otana is next in line to take over the highest spiritual position in the Azadi Empire, second only to the Six, a position said to hold even more power than that of the Child Empresses. Yeah, okay, so that must be what the seat is. So my guess is probably the seat is the true power in the Azadi, because they're second to the Six, and they're probably the ones that have the uh, Empress's uh, collective ears, so to speak. Here we have Hami. General Hami is the supreme commander of the Allied forces in the Northlands, the highest ranking officer in the Coalition of the Willing. Hami first took note of Kian Alvane when Kian was a teenager, fighting for his life on the streets of Sadir. An up-and-coming commander, Hami took the boy under his wing, trained him, and convinced him to become an army conscript. As apostle, Kian rose to equal his mentor in rank, but the two began to drift apart divided by Kian's increasing zealotry and his religious devotion. Despite the growing distance between them, Hami still considers Kian an adopted son, and Kian respects Hami as both a friend, an officer, and surrogate father. Unlike the majority of the Zadi officers, General Hami was not born into Sadir uh, nobility. He does not hail from one of the first families, and this is the only thing his enemies can fault him for and the reason Hami has seen his authority challenged by the religious police and the increasing power of the Markurian emissary Saya and her commander, Vamon. Okay, so Hami is similar to Kian in that neither of them are noble-born. This might also cause uh, Vamon to look down on Hami as well, even though technically both Kian and Hami outrank him. I'm sure that grades on him. Okay, new journal entry. Um, let's see. No, we read that one already. Oh, I don't think we read this last part. I think this was after we uh, uh, intervened uh, with Mr. London here. Things not to do in Propos. Number one, do not drink the water. Number two, do not stay at the White Swallow past two o'clock in the morning. Number three, don't hang out on Caprova unless you want to be propositioned. Number four, don't mess with Mr. London. Today I can cross all four off my list. I couldn't let that coward L London beat up Baruti, so now he's off my list, and I'm probably on his. Also, I should learn Cantonese. <laughs> okay. Let's have a look around here again. I'm not a demanding flatmate, but I did insist on buying a good bed. This is that. I like beds. I like spending time in beds. By that, I don't just mean sleeping, but also other bed-related activities. Ah, indeed. Sex. I mean sex. <laughs> I enjoy having sex in bed. Like a human person with genitals. <laughs> Short and sweet is uh, Zoe's declaration of sexual interest. <laughs> I don't think there's anything else up there, no? We have a vent. The ventilation has been on and off for weeks. The agency promised they'd fix the membranes, but nope. I can't survive another Europolis summer in a non-ventilated apartment. I'll go insane. Nope, still nothing. The cooling's off and it's going to be a thousand degrees in here tonight. I wonder if that's where the bug is. We saw in uh, the uh, previous episode of Zoe's story that someone is listening in to what's going on in this apartment. Yep, same uh, Eurotrash ad here. I don't think new stuff actually ever appears on the screen uh, throughout the game. How come it's always raining when I'm in here, but when I go outside, it's not? Mind you, I'm not complaining. It's just odd. Hmm. That's a little um, poking fun at the fact that the game developers realized that it was too difficult to make it rain in Pro Past when you were outside. And so... While, uh, on the other hand, they can just create these rainy textures on the windows, no problem. 
<laughs> so it ends up every time you go outside, it stops raining. We have the best view of a brick wall and neon signs in Propass. If by best, you mean worst. Have the dishes. Okay, so there are dirty dishes. We're not perfect. I think it's my turn. Ugh. Well, it makes sense. After all, he did the cooking. Yeah, no. Later. <laughs> but uh, Zoe is going to procrastinate. What is that? A rake? I think it's a rake. Reza bought that. I'm, um, uh, yeah. I didn't buy that. Not in Zoe's taste. Stove top? I don't use that a lot, but Reza's a pretty good cook. Not my day to cook. Also, not the time to cook. Also, no groceries to cook with. I'm cook blocked. <laughs> not even a single fridge magnet. We're the worst people. What would be the point? It's even sadder on the inside. You have the bathroom here? The bathroom is depressingly small. We take turns and sex in the shower would be an extreme sport. <laughs> the bathroom is depressingly small. We take turns. Do I have to pee? No, I don't have to pee. Oh, okay. I think that's it, so let's get dressed and head out. Much as I'd like to go out dressed in nothing but my knickers, I think I'll get dressed. Oh, I actually do have to say get dressed. Okay, I thought it was automatic. Three months now and I still haven't unpacked most of my useless crap. Not now. Tonight. Definitely tonight. Time to roll up my shirt sleeves and get my shit together. After the Euro Trash premiere, of course. I can't miss that. Oh, Mr. the plant. Mr. Planty. Mr. Planty. He's been through a lot, poor chap. The drought of last Tuesday. The great tumble of June. This morning's accident with the half-empty beer can. Poor Mr. Planty. Hmm. <laughs> so, let's... Oh, this is... Okay. This is where I get dressed. Ah, and that gives us a journal update. Let's have a look. Hello, boiling hot Europulus Monday. You suck. So Mira has given me the day off without explanation for reasons I probably don't want to know about. Can I plead complete ignorance? I probably can. I look very innocent. Gift horse, mouse, etc. I'm not complaining. Okay, sure, it does mean less money at the end of the week. But a day of aimless wandering and boredom and propast? Win. Of course, I do have therapy first thing. We all know how I feel about that. Future Zoe or my nosy children slash grandchildren slash random hackers, I feel less than enthused about it. Aside from the opportunity to gaze at Roman's lush and lovely head of hair, it is very lovely. I'm tired of talking, talking, talking about myself. I can't even imagine how he feels about it. And let's not forget awkward flirtations, which is a thing that happened. I'm sure there will be repercussions. Repercussions of my own making. I don't know what I was thinking. Well, I know what I was thinking. I know exactly what I was thinking. But bad Zoe. Bad, bad Zoe. I'm sure there will be questions about Reza and our relationship. Or maybe I'm just paranoid because, ugh, I don't want to talk about Reza and our relationship right now. I don't know what's going on between us, but it's not good. It's dysfunctional and depressing. It's sad to think that after all we've been through, Reza and me, it might just end with nothing. But history is not enough of a reason to stick together, so I guess we'll see. Positive thoughts, Zoe. Day off. Yes. Okay, now let's head out. Oh, yay, more eye operatives. Eyes everywhere. I've never seen so many of them out on the streets. Citizen, hold. Oh, oh. Where are you going? Why? Answer the question or you will be detained. 
I have an appointment. The streets are unsafe. Return to your home or business to conduct your appointment remotely. I'm seeing my doctor. What is the name and business location of your doctor? They have no right to ask for that information, but if I resist, they might put me on a watch list. Or worse. As far as I know, the Eye has no right to interrogate me. Not unless they arrest me first. This does seem to be overdoing it, even for the Eye. I'm sorry, but that's private information. You're violating my civil right. I, I can contact my lawyer right now if you- Zoe Maya Castillo, resident of Sunshine Plaza Terraces by OCG. You have a prior record with the Syndicate. The, the charges were dropped. It, it was a misunderstanding. I could detain you right now and bring you in for questioning. Sure. And then you can deal with the fallout when I tell my story to the press. What you're doing is illegal. Stay off the streets, Miss Castillo. It's for your own protection. Sure it is. Proceed. Yeah, Good this boy, is getting Dad. ridiculous. Well, I don't think we need Crowboy at this point. We've been to the Shashadri Tower before. We basically just need to get to the upper level. Let's see, I think we've already looked at the Hollow Sculpture and the Sun. Oh, I was just about to look at the uh, cruiser and then it took off. We'll see if there's anything else to look around here besides the usual mysterious towers. I've asked everyone what those towers are and no one knows for sure. Some say anti-grab units from before the collapse, others say they're vents. I'm just a guy with guitar. Oh, there's the musician. He's moved to a new location. Let's see. This is... Oh, I thought there was something that... Uh, oh, maybe? Ah, yes, here we go. Emma de Freeha is setting up a new art gallery here. I convinced her Propass would be the perfect location. Yep, so there's, again, Emma setting up uh, another art ex exhibition here. Um, on the one hand, it's nice to know that she and Zoe are still in contact. Um, although it does kind of beg the question, while Zoe has forgotten what she did on her adventure, Emma knows a little of it, at least, um, because Zoe confided confided in both um, Emma and Charlie in the previous game. So it is kind of a shame that Emma doesn't really make an appearance here, um, although she does get mentioned, as you just saw. Because she might be able to help Zoe out. As, uh, as famous as she is, she might have connections. Every day, more armored vehicles. You'd think the Eye was preparing for war. Definitely rather ominous. Freeze-dried jellyfish chips, vacuum-packed boiled beef, carbonated tequila shots, blood pudding fudge, fried cabbage jerky, oh, salted pigeon bits. Bits? Which bits? Oh, it all sounds so delightful. There's absolutely nothing I would want in there. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and take off here. So we need to get up to the higher level. Ah, this time though, these stairs are blocked. So we're going to have to go down and around, I guess. Of course, that there, this one's blocked now too. Now this would make sense um, that the eye is becoming more and more oppressive, that we would be restricted more and more in how we can get around. It just gives that kind of uh, claustrophobic feeling. Part of the shuk still seems to be open, the other parts being closed off. Move along. Nothing to see here.
So let's see if we can make our way around this way. This will take us past, I think, the Wadi Corp logo. Yep, there it is. So now we come up this way and then head back towards Shishadri Tower. I'm saying is the acquisition logo. We're making damn sure of it. Okay. Okay, yeah, I see your point, but look, you hired us for a reason. We can deliver what you need, and MTI has what you need. There's a convergence of interests, is what I'm saying. Uh-huh. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. We'll let them know we have their files, and that they'll find their way into the, um, the open market, unless they agree to sell. Between getting something or nothing, they'll choose something. You really don't want to know the how. All you need to know is what you're getting and how much it'll cost you. The moment I see the cash, we start moving. Not a percentage of it, not most of it, all of it. Look, this channel is secure, but I don't like staying connected for too long. Yeah, and what she was saying is basically the same thing that she was saying the previous time we listened in on her. I was just curious to see if she would say something different. Hey, Nella. Any new uh, observations? Nella. Street chef, Marxist, spark plug, and friend of mine. I do love her in smaller doses. I wasn't sure you'd make it today. What with the Panzer Pandu out in force. Say hello to our new robot overlords. It was touch and go. Were you waiting for me? I don't do apologies. Okay. When you bumped into me outside the collective, I was confrontational. I didn't mean to be. You don't do apologies, Nella. Hmm. You're right, so shut up and accept it. Ha. Accepted. So why were you confrontational? Paranoia, Zozo. I'm just on edge with this party business. No big deal. Actually, I, I don't know why I didn't realize it er earlier, but this is also Miranda Rayson doing the voice of Nella. <laughs> Just a higher register and with a bit of an accent. Party business? Oh, she must mean the Marxists. I'm curious to know what's got her so on edge. What's going on? <sighs> Manifesto starting to come apart at the seams. Too many conflicts of interests. Rivas is having a tough time keeping everyone in line. There's no consensus about strategy, about what to do to get people to open their eyes and see what's really going on in this city. Some want to keep doing what we have been doing. Peaceful protests, debate, passing out pamphlets. Others want to take more radical action. Like what? It's politics, Zozo. You know how it is. The hardest part is agreeing on a common agenda. I'm not sure it matters. We're last in the polls and it'll take a miracle to change that. But anyway... You are asking me about Hannah Roth. I'm looking for her. Why? Oh, it's complicated. Queenie, you know, the babka on the boat down Sure, in... everyone knows her. Queenie asked me to look for Hannah, to find out if she's okay or not okay, I guess. Why the hell would she be asking you? Campaign business. I'm trying to get her to officially support Leia Uminska. Ah, it's all starting to make sense. Do you know Hannah? She runs errands for merchants in Propast, does odd jobs for anyone willing to pay. She's helped me out a few times, deliveries mostly, and also... Well, that's how I know Hannah. But I don't know where she lives. I don't know who her friends are. I don't know how to get hold of her. So, why...? She runs a gang, all homeless girls, the Dragonflies. They operate out of the underground here in Propast. They do odd jobs, legit jobs, but also other jobs. Hmm. Like crime. Like crime, Zozo. Pickpocketing, fencing, smuggling, selling unlicensed dreams. Drugs. Keep an eye out for the dragonfly symbol and the girl with short pink hair and piercings. That'll be Hannah. Oh, I appreciate it, Nella. I'm sorry about getting involved in your affairs last week. Don't worry about it. You still haven't tried the pork sausages. The last batch was a bit iffy. There were complaints and also food poisoning, but I just received a new delivery and they smell much better this time around. 
Right. Uh, some other time, maybe. I hope you find Hannah. <laughs> so there's a little hint about what happens if you do decide to give Reza the sausages instead of the cheese soup. It's not pretty. All right, so let's say hello to Dr. Roman, I guess. How are things between you and Reza? They're okay. Just okay. Rocky. And how do you feel about that? Things are rougher than they were. It's not like we fight every day, but it's tense. We're circling each other. Nothing's changed. I love Reza. We're having a tough time, but it's worth fighting for, right? <laughs> Both of these almost sound exactly the same. It's like, oh, maybe. Uh. <laughs> Just uh, Zoe's feelings for Reza doesn't seem to have changed much since the very first game. She's always very ambivalent about him. I feel good. I feel fine. I try not to think too much about it. Listen to your own feelings. Be aware of them. I will. Hey, in our last session... Last week... Last week, you said you want to remember. Right. About what happened before the coma. Yeah. Is that still the case? I haven't changed my mind. I need to go back before I can move forward. I want to remember. Yep. Okay. Good. I think it's right of you to focus on remembering. I believe it will help you wake up. Wake up? What do you mean? I am awake. Oh, wait, sorry, I I'm getting a call. Do you need to take it? Oh, it's, it's just Baruti, my campaign manager. I'm, I'm sure it can wait. Sorry about that. Where were we? D what did you mean by waking up? Are you sleeping well? Uh, no, not really, no. And why is that? I, I dream. A lot. They're very vivid dreams. Lucid. Not like... like normal dreams at all. Do you remember these dreams? I'm not sure I want to share my dreams with Roman. They feel important, but private. I'll figure them out on my own. I think my dreams are important. If I talk about them, maybe Roman can help me figure them out. I suppose it's worth a shot. Yeah, they're... They're almost always the same. There's a temple in the clouds, surrounded by tall mountains, all misty and white. There's a strange, um, man who speaks in riddles, and... and an ape-like creature on a... a floating chair. I know, it's odd, it, it's crazy. What else? There's a child, or... I don't know, it looks like a child. She... Or he is very ill. If the child dies, the dream ends. We all vanish. All of us. Everything. The, the universe. Reality. What does it mean? I'm not sure. Do you think your dreams are related to your memory loss? Crazy as that may seem, I feel they do. Maybe not literally, as in I've forgotten meeting a floating ape creature, but there's something there that's strangely familiar. Yeah, well, you know. They may be a signal that some memories are beginning to re-emerge. You think so? Dreams are never just dreams. They can be mirrors, reflecting our darkest fears and deepest desires. They can provide us with clues to who we are. They can... stir... Memories. But let's leave that for next week. Our time is up. Today was another step forward, Zoe. Regardless of what you do or do not remember, I want you to think about what I said. About working on your memories. About remembering. You really should write down your dreams, you know. It will help you remember. Well, you should be there to write them down for me. I, I beg your pardon? <laughs> 
<laughs> Once again, just boop, just came right out. Oh, that came out all wrong. I didn't mean to flirt. Again. Of course I didn't. Therapist, Zoe. Consider your reputation. Wait, what? <laughs> I love the option here. Retreat, <laughs> retreat. No, I, I mean, if we had a session right after, in your office, post-dreaming, then you could, you know, write them down while they're fresh. Oh, right, of course. Uh, well. I should head out, leave you to your note-taking. Always taking notes, that's me. See you next week, Zoe. Same time, same place. You betcha. I thought we agreed you wouldn't show up at my office. I am not comfortable with this. She just left, by the way. Hey, you probably passed her on the way in. She would have seen you. I'm a ghost, Dr. Zelenka. People do not see me unless I let them. What have you learned? Well, she wants to remember. And will she? I don't know. Eventually, probably. You know what to do if she does. You've made that very clear. What else would you like to tell me today? She's not sleeping well. It's her dreams. She used the words vivid and lucid. She told me about one recurring dream. I'm not sure what to make of it, but maybe your employer... But... There was something about a temple in the clouds. Mountains, riddles, talking apes. Uh, if it wasn't for the fact that she detests dream machines, I'd say she'd been using one. Oh, and she also said something about a sick child. If the child dies, the dream ends. Everything ends. Miss Castillo has a very vivid imagination. I doubt it means anything, but there you are. Your doubts, Dr. Zelenka, have been noted. In your professional opinion, is she starting to remember? Not unless she did go to a temple in the clouds to meet talking apes. That is all. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, how much longer will I need to do this? Without us, you would have nothing. Do you not want it to continue? Uh, I... Until she remembers. Until then. And if that never happens? Then we terminate. Good day to you, Dr. Zelenka. <clears throat> I just paid the doctor a visit. He tells me she has her mindset on remembering what occurred last year. Yes, Zelenka does believe she will remember in time. There's another thing we just learned. She has vivid dreams, as you said she would. She spoke to him about it. The doctor mentioned a temple in the clouds, mythical creatures, riddles. I'm sending you the recording. She described these dreams to him as particularly vivid, almost like visions. Yes. Lucid dreaming without the dream machine. Sehr gut, Fräulein. I will contact you immediately if I hear anything else. I have ears in all places. The moment she remembers, we will know. <laughs> 